We're so happy that Sister Jaylene is here uh, as well. Sister, many blessings to you. And once again, to echo what um, our youth pastor is saying, we are so grateful for our pastor. Amen. 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 If it wasn't for pastor, I, I wouldn't be here for sure because the Lord has used him in such an amazing way in my life personally and I know in many of your lives. And he continues to mentor. He continues to lead. He continues to teach. He continues above all to intercede for you. Right. Many of you are here because he has interceded. And God is an awesome God of mercy and grace. Amen. How he responds. How he responds. How, how God's responsiveness is because his heart is a heart of, of unfailing and faithful love. So why don't we, um, we're going to open the word of God today. And we actually have it on the screen. Today we're going to talk about being wholly, completely, entirely, unwaveringly committed to Jesus. And we're going to um, look at Leviticus chapter 1, 10 to 2 through 13. And then we're also going to look at Leviticus 6, chapter 12 to 13. And we're going to highlight certain aspects of these scriptures. And it's, a, I don't think, not a coincidence that the some of the worship was about being abiding completely in the Lord. And uh, Leviticus 1, 10 to 13 reads in the following way. It says, If his offering is of the flocks of the sheep or of the goats, as a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring a male without blemish. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord and the priests. Aaron's sons shall sprinkle its blood all around the altar, and he shall cut it into pieces with his head and its fat, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. But he shall wash the entrails and the legs with water. Then the priest shall bring it all. Everybody say all. all. He, he shall bring it all and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Leviticus 6, 12 to 13 says, in referring to the burnt offering, and the fire on the altar shall keep burning on it. It shall not be put out. Amen. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burning, burnt offering in order on it. Amen. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings A fire shall always, always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Why don't we lift our hands to Jesus, Lord Jesus, we come before you today. We thank you because of your amazing, amazing, wonderful love for your, your call upon our hearts, your call upon our lives to walk, Lord, wholly, completely before you. I pray, Lord, oh, I want to stand back today and I want to hear what you have to say. Oh, ha, 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 say ha, 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 say ha, ha, ha. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Jesus, because you are so good. You are so great. Oh, open the hearts. Open, prepare our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may give praise to God as you take your seats this morning. God has called us out to be sold out for him. He paid the price for us with everything, his own life, his own blood. Hallelujah. And because God gave his all, he looks at us in the same way that we also need to give our all for him. Yeah. He's not impressed when we come and we worship and, and, we, and we go through motions and routines and we, we, we sometimes know how to play the part and we clock in and we clock out. How, I remember when I was working at a gas station, actually, Brother Stephen worked the same one, and we wore uh, a uniform, Unocal gas station uniform, and I remember clocking in and clocking out. And I didn't come to church in my Unocal uh, uniform, right? I was there for that moment of time, and when it was done, thank you, Jesus, it was done, right? I was tired of cleaning the oil and doing everything that we used to do. 
But when we come to the Lord, when we walk in Him, this is not just a hangout. It's not a hobby. It's not just a, a family activity. It's not a social activity. We're coming, hallelujah, with our whole life, with everything that we have. Oh, because He is more than worthy. Because that is what the Lord has called us to. God is not interested in just a piece of us. He's interested in all of us. Hallelujah. He is the one that wants to reign in our heart. He is the one that wants to reign in all of our life. He is the one that needs to be in charge. He is the one that needs to take over from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, all the way from the left and all the way to the right, from the inside of my heart, all the way to the outside. I need to completely surrender. Oh, I need to be able to be able to give up. Oh, hallelujah. And let him take control. To surrender means that I am not taking hold, hallelujah, of the wheel anymore, but I am completely yielding to Almighty God. Consider a ship out at sea, a huge, cru a huge cruise ship, and let's say there are two captains at the front of this ship, and one captain has a course that he wants to, that, to follow. He wants to go north, and the other captain wants to go south. It's never going to work that way. But sometimes we try to take hold of our life and we try to be our own captain. We try to move in the direction that we think is best for us. But frankly, we are bombarded every single day. Men, you watch, we watch movies or whatever it is, commercials or even in music. And we're bombarded with the, the idea that, you know what, go ahead and do what you want to do. Go ahead and be true to yourself. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. But you just, you just got, you know, you you can just go and pursue whatever seems right and best. And I came across this the lyrics of this song. I'm not sure if any of you have watched Sing, the animation, and has really impressive music and singing. And that little mouse that sings, you guys remember little mouse? Well, he sings this song, and he was the writer, the author of this song. It's called My Way. It was actually first sung by and recorded by Frank Sinatra in 1968. But these are sort of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the messages that have been speaking throughout all of these decades, and just a couple of phrases from it. This is what he sings. He says, I've lived a life that's full. I travel each and every highway, and much, much more, he says, I did it. I did it my way. Regrets I have, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention, I did what I had to do, and saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course. That's interesting. He said he's the one that planned it, and he charted it. Every careful step along the byway, and much, much more, I did it, I did it my way. But the Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but that way, it leads to death. Because what, what man is looking for is to fulfill his pleasure, pleasure and his interest for that moment. But Satan is always deceiving. He's always saying it's greener on this side. Come over to this side. You don't have to worry about God. But what I want to say this morning, what God's word says, is that God is the one that knows everything. God is the one that sees everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And not only does he know, but he reigns over all creation. And not only is he sovereign, but my God is powerful. He can do the impossible, and He does every day. And not only is He powerful, but He is Savior, and He has appointed us for salvation. And not only has He appointed you to salvation, but He has also elected you to be His child, to be His son, to be His daughter. Oh, and that's why when we come to the conclusion of the matter, we can say, Oh Lord, I know with all that my way is not the best way, but your way is the only way that I am interested in. Your way, Lord, is the way that I need to surrender to with all of my heart. Lord, be Lord of my life. 
my heart to you, God. I surrender my everything to you before you. And I need to cling. I need to clutch. I need to hold on to. I need to grab on to. I need to get on. Hallelujah. And hold on to the Lord. Hold on to his feet. Hold on to his hands. And allow him to lead every step that I take. How many of you feel that way? You don't want to even walk an inch outside of what God is not leading you to. You want to be able to follow him every micrometer, every nanometer of your life. That scripture that we opened up with, it teaches us about the first offering that is mentioned in Leviticus. And that's called the burnt offering. And there are some details that I wanted to just review with you this morning. It's similar to some of the other sacrifices in that many of the sacrifices, if not all, of the sacrifices of Leviticus are always pointing to Christ. Because it, it was a substitution for the sin in general of the people. But there was other aspects that separated this offering from the other offerings. And one of the things was that it was done out of a free will. That means the offerer did it out of their own heart, out of their own accord. Number three, there was a sweet aroma that was associated with this offering. And it was entirely offered up. Some of the sacrifices that were offered, some of the portions were for the offerer, and the priests were the ones that usually had the main portion because that's what their families would eat on, the priests and his household, but not this one. Not this one. The bull or the sheep or the goat, they were, they were skinned, the skin was removed, and the blood was poured out on the altar, but every part of that animal was offered up wholly and entirely to the Lord. The other aspect of this was that this offering was offered at sunrise and it was offered at sunset. Meaning, there was always fire there. God made it very clear to Moses that there had to be a continual fire there at the burnt offering site. And so when we consider this sacrifice, of course, it always speaks to us of the Lord who offered himself wholly, wholly, completely, Absolutely, perfectly, oh, without blemish, without defect, he completely took our place and he completely wiped out and washed away every single sin from the first and the last, but we are covered in his blood. And he did it out of his own will. He did it out of his own volition. It was entirely his decision to show us that amazing agape love that pastor was talking to us about. Yeah. That agape love which is self-sacrificial is the most costly love of all. And just as a self-reflection, just on, on the side, I've just been contemplating that. When we tell Jesus that we love him, are we saying, Lord, I love you so much that I'm willing to suffer and I'm willing to die? Lord, I'm willing to lay everything down for you. Because that's the expression of his demonstration of his love toward us. Amen. God also is calling us to love in that manner. And we're going to get into that a little bit. But the beautiful fragrance of this offering is also representative of what Jesus did. Because when Jesus gave his life for us on Calvary, there was a beautiful aroma in the sense that there was now peace. A peace was made. Peace was achieved between Almighty and Holy God and you and I who are sinners. But more than this, what this offering signifies is that because of what the Lord has done for us, 
Now we can boldly come into a place of relationship. Now we have the privilege of being completely and absolutely, entirely, and wholly dedicated to Him. Oh, personal and intimate and, hallelujah, limitless relationship was made possible, hallelujah, with the King of glory. Why? Because of what the Lord has done for us. Now I completely am consecrated to Him. Oh, from sunset to sunrise and from sunrise to sunset. Oh, that's why the psalmist said, there shall continually be a praise in my mouth. And the Lord tells us, uh, there shall continually be a worship in my heart. Oh, and the fire of the Holy Spirit shall continually burn within my life. Oh, I don't know about you, but I need God's Holy Spirit to burn in my heart, to burn in my life. When I get up in the morning, when I'm going about my day, when I'm going to sleep at night, and I get up again, I need to stick, extend my arms, my hands, and commit my way to the Lord. My life needs to be like that fire burnt offering that will never go out. That nothing in this life can be able to extinguish the relationship that I have. That's why the Bible says that the thing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death, nor life, nor angel, nor demon, nor things of the present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other thing in all creation shall be able to do that. It has no power. It has no place. When I am committing my full life and I am living for God. God is calling us today, oh, like never before, for our life to burn like that burnt offering. And as I was going through this study, I was always remembering 12.1 of Romans. In Romans 12.1, this is a memory verse, of course. And Paul writes to the Romans, Therefore, I urge you. He starts off with that verb, urge you. Meaning, it's a sense of urgency. There's a sense of priority. There's a sense of alarm. There's a sense of wake up. I urge you. I beg you, I beseech you, brethren, brothers and sisters. And then it says, by the mercies of God, almost as if the Apostle Paul is standing up and pointing us to the cross and pointing us to the sacrifice, pointing us to Jesus who was the sacrifice for us and considering the great weight of the Lord's gift his gift which continually is falling on our life. His gift which never ends. It doesn't. It starts today and it never goes out. It starts today and it goes on forever. Because our salvation is forever. Our life is eternal. God's mercies are new every day and God's mercies are constantly fueling the fire of our anointing fueling the fire of our blessing. Oh, keeping strong His promises in view of His mercy. Pay, pay attention. Look up and look what God has done for us. Look up and appreciate. Oh, be thankful. Oh, be a beautiful of all. And then He says, now look at your own self. He says, present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Meaning your life, your very life. And this, this encompasses our, our response of agape love 
to the Lord is that if the Lord is willing to give our life to Him, we are also called to be willing to give our life for Him. Right now, God is not calling you to literally die for Him, but we are to die to sin. We are to die from the way that we used to live. Sin cannot have its place the way it had with us in the past, but now we live for Him. Now we are set aside as is acceptable and holy sacrifice. And then it says, this is your spiritual service of worship. You don't have to worry about going out and putting to death an innocent animal because I already did it for you. But now God is calling us. He says, you know what? Now you are that aroma, that offering and you are that burnt offering that is going on and on and on. And so God is calling us in that, in that, in that call, in that commandment. And he's saying, I am calling you that you would surrender and that I want to govern your life, your existence. I want to be the essence of your life. Oh, what your heart is full with, full of, what your mind is is focused on oh hallelujah I need to be hallelujah completely dedicated in all of these things and when I'm talking about guarding the mind and guarding the heart the Bible talks about Jesus talks about so much of what is in our heart is there because of what we have put there so much of what is in our heart comes as a result of what our eyes have seen. Wow, yeah. Amen? Yes, nice. So much is what our ears have heard. Wow. Yes. Of what we have spoken. Mm -hmm. yeah. talks, Jesus talks about the uncleanliness of the mouth. What you, you, what you put in to your mouth in terms of physical food is not going to contaminate, but what comes out of your mouth is directly correlated by what is in your heart. And so when we are guarding our heart and our life before the Lord, it's something where we also have to guard what we are watching. We have to guard what we're listening to. We have to guard what we're the speech and the words that we use. We have to guard the decisions that we make in our life. We have to uh, uh, be able to uh, pay attention to that, that relationship that I'm talking about where God is constantly pointing out His mercy and His love and we are to respond to it. We are to react to it. We are to live to it. We are to breathe to it. Oh, hallelujah. And as I was speaking to some of the young men recently and what this means is that my life for Christ is something that must be intentional. My life for God has to be deliberate. Yeah. It's not going to be automatic. Amen. You know, there are certain things that we don't have to worry about. For instance, I don't have to worry about breathing, amen? amen. Unless I'm swimming underwater. Yes. I have to come up from air. But the brain takes care of that, right? The brain, and I don't want to go through all the pathways, but the brain uh, provides the autonomic nervous system, which causes us to breathe. It's a, it's a rhythmic event. It's an electrical event that happens. I don't have to worry about my heartbeat. How many of you guys are worried about your heartbeat? It's beating 60 to 100 times per, per minute, and you don't have to worry about it. But I do have to worry about eating. I do have to worry about drinking. I do have to worry about getting up in the morning and getting dressed and, and getting to work. I have to worry and be concerned and be occupied and be purposeful and be intentional about that in the same exact way. When I wake up in the morning, there are decisions that I have to make. There are places I have to go. There are people I have to, I need to speak to. And there are things that, are, that, that even the enemy will, will put in front of me. But I have to be intentional about, about like not looking and looking to the left and looking to the right and looking away. There are things that might come across my life, but I have to say no. I am sold out. I don't belong to myself anymore. No, my I belong to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And because I belong to Jesus, I need to be constantly deliberate and intentional and purposeful in the way that I live my life before the Lord. The Bible talks about Daniel. 
when he was given the opportunity to eat the rich food and drink and wine of the king, that he likely realized that it had been defiled, that this had been offered up to idols. And so he made a decision. And I want you to think about that for a moment because Daniel and a few others are mentioned in the book of Daniel. As young men, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, few young men that made a decision to purposely live for the Lord. And God doesn't mention any of the others. And yet a whole generation of, of, young, of young people came from Judah. We know that Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem. He broke down the walls. And yet what happened to all of the others? What happened to them? But those few, including Daniel, they said, you know what? They might take my name away. They might take my identity away. They might change my language and my speech. Yeah. They might force me to take a part in their culture. Yeah. They might force me to live here and not in the place of worship. They might not allow me to go, hallelujah, and do the things that I used to do. I may not be able to go out and sing a song of worship and praise. Oh, but I am not going to contaminate myself. I am sold out. I am sold out. I am holy, completely, absolutely committed to my God. Society may change. Environment may change. People may change. But I am God. I am going to be sold out. I am going to be deliberate. I am going to be, hallelujah, intentional about serving the Lord. And that's what Daniel did. And that's why God used him in such a powerful way. He outlived the kingdom that had enslaved him. Amen. He outlived it. And he was able to continue prophesying even beyond our generation. Amen. Then Moses. Moses was raised in luxury and in the, high, the most powerful kingdom at that time of Egypt. But the Bible says, the writer of Hebrews reminds us, he says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God that enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. This life that we have is very, very short. Today you are born, and the next day, oh hallelujah, we don't know. Oh hallelujah, but in this life that is so short, God is looking for you to say, oh, I'm going to dedicate these short days. Oh, however long or short they are, but I am going to dedicate, oh hallelujah, my whole life to the Lord. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He says, I no longer live. Wow. It's not me. But Christ lives in me. Yeah. Jesus is the one that lives in me. Yeah. My life is not consumed in myself. My life is not consumed, hallelujah, with the things that of this world. But my life needs to be consumed, hallelujah, by Christ. My life needs to be consumed with the Holy Ghost. My life needs to be consumed with the presence of God. I came across this author, um, and this particular author, he talks about being obsessed and he talks about the concept of obsession sometimes when you think of obsession like oh my god that sounds terrible right but when he gets into this he talks about being obsessed with God the total being of our life inside and out is to be absolutely obsessed by the presence of God and he compares that experience to the experience of a little child and her mom, right? When the little child is with 
Her mom, she is very comfortable when her mommy's there, right? And the moment she doesn't see her mom in view, she is very aware and she's going to go out and run out and make sure that she finds her mom. If she gets into trouble, if she falls and hurts herself, it doesn't matter where she is, she's going to start calling on her mom's name, mommy, mommy, wherever she is, she knows that her mommy's around. She knows that her mommy's awareness, or mommy's presence is abiding, that she's abiding in her mom's presence. And the same way, when we are constantly abiding in the presence of God, we have a continual awareness of His glory, a continual awareness of His presence, a continual awareness of His love and His mercy, a continual presence so that the Lord becomes constantly at the forefront of our view, the captain of our ship, the burning fire, oh hallelujah, within our hearts, and everything, everything, everything is looked upon from that point of living and existing, not just a point of view, but it's a point of our existence. Where are we today? Are we in an abiding place? of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we in that abiding place where we are so out for him? Oh, are we in that abiding place when his fire, his presence burns in the morning and it burns at noonday and it burns at night? Are we in that abiding place? Oh, I know. Oh, I know that that is what the Lord's desire for us today is. That we would come close to the altar of his presence, to the place of his anointing, to the place of his embrace, to the place of his mercy, oh, to the place of his grace, to the place of his salvation, to the place of his promises, to the place where we are protected and we are shielded and we are guarded. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come into that place of abiding. Come in, hallelujah, to that place of the burning presence of Almighty God that completely, hallelujah, occupies our heart and it occupies our mind and it determines our steps. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, in the powerful name of Jesus. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. All right, we serve an awesome God. Can someone say praise God? Praise God. We serve an awesome God. And our God, one thing that I know is that the Lord, he's the Lord of mercy. Amen. He is so merciful. And there are stories of so many folks in the Bible that, man, they just, they were living their own way their whole time. And it just took one prayer. It just took one prayer for them to say, God, I need you. And God looked down and he said, have you heard my servant? Have you heard? He's calling out. And God works a miracle. He brings about a change. 